So God said, well, I guess if I'm going to come down to earth and I'm going to defeat Satan, I'm going to have to get me a body. And so what Jesus did was he came into a body in a woman's belly, a virgin's belly, and walked on this earth for 33 and a half years. And when he got to the blue shores of Galilee, he could walk on water. When he met the man of Gadara, he could cast the devils out of him. When he came across a funeral, he could raise somebody from the dead. You know why he could do it? Because now God had a voice in a body. Now God had authority in a body. But I got news for you. For after 33 and a half years or so, that body was resurrected from the dead and went back to heaven. Satan was so happy when he saw Jesus on that cloud going up with those witnesses, a great cloud of witnesses. He said, whoo, finally got rid of him. Now I'm going to have to go down and discourage this bunch. 500 people, 500 disciples heard Jesus at one time say, wait in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. But yet in the book of Acts, we find 120 meeting together in an upper room. Whatever happened to the 380? That's my God, I feel like preaching this. That 120 is your Sunday night crowd, but the 500 was the Sunday morning crowd. He couldn't get 380 of them back on Sunday night. They had stuff to do. They had to get up early and work in the morning. They had kids to get to school. So all of a sudden, there's only 120. But hear what I'm about to say. All of a sudden, it was Pentecost. And the Bible said when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one place in one accord. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven like a mighty rushing wind filled all the house where they were seated. There appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. Here is what you've got to understand. When Jesus took that physical body and took it back to heaven, He said, I'm going to send you another comforter which is the Holy Ghost. But here's the problem. The Holy Ghost is a spirit. The Holy Ghost is a spirit without a body. And Jesus said, in order for me to send the Holy Ghost, I've got to find me a body. So what he... So what he did, when Satan saw Jesus go up in the cloud, he said, I got him whipped, I've got him defeated, because thank God, God's no longer in a body. Devil got a rude awakening ten days later, because when the Holy Ghost came and the fire danced on their heads and they began to speak with other tongues, 120 became the ecclesia of the church, the called out ones, the ones that were gathered together. Before the day was over, there were 3,120. Before the week was over, there was 8,120. And now there's about 800 million tongues talking people believing the baptism of the Holy Ghost in the world today I got news for you the Holy Ghost had to have a body and the Holy Ghost has found him a body it's a Baptist body it's a Church of God body it's a symbol of God body it's an Episcopalian body I'm telling you if you got your name in the Lamb's book of life of heaven if you've been washed in the blood of the Lamb if you call yourself a child of the Most High God and you've got a covenant with God the devil's in big trouble tonight because the Holy Spirit found Found a bomb. I want you to hear the rest of this message, and we're making available the DVDs and CDs of the Hickson Meeting. Let me share with you the messages I preached. Moving God and binding Satan by the blood covenant. Releasing God's will through the tongues of men and angels. I preached a message called, Has America Prophetically Entered Its Fullness of Time? Here's another one. The donkey is limping, the elephant is snoring, and they won't get up. And then finally, enduring the third trimester pre-tribulation birth pains. These are the five messages I preached at the Hickson Conference. Rick Shelton preached a message on being healed and delivered on spiritual authority that was phenomenal. Bill Cloud did a Hebraic study that people were just absolutely in awe with. Tommy Bates preached a powerful message and showed us pictures and told us stories that built our faith. People were getting drunk in the spirit just listening to Tommy preach. It was so anointed. And then also my dad came and talked about the uh, what God was showing him for the last days. Judy Jacobs, we have the ladies' luncheon that's included here. So you can get these 10 uh, CDs. The CDs have the message only, and the cost is $60. Postage paid. That's right, we're paying the postage. And order 08HXCD for CD album. For DVDs, the DVDs contain the music, the message, and the altar service. It's, the cost is $120. That's 10 DVDs. For that price, we pay the postage, shipping, and handling. And it's 08HXDVD. You can order by calling toll-free 1-888-21-BRED. 
and uh, requesting the DVD or the CD album. You can order by writing us at Perry Stone, P.O. Box 3595, Cleveland, Tennessee, 37320. And uh, tell us whether you want the CD or DVD and include the $60 or the $120. Again, our, the post you just pay. Or you can go to our website at perrystone.org and order that way. And I believe you will be absolutely, totally blessed and thrilled to hear it. I hope you can get the DVDs because the music is phenomenal. And you get to see the altar service, and there, there, there are always some things on there. Now, let me just say something. When we show any of our conferences on television, there are certain things we edit out that we do not allow to go over television, but we keep it on the CD and the DVD. So you're going to get, especially the three messages I did about America, there were some things that, uh, that Saturday night especially, we would not allow to go on, on television at all. Marcus Lamb um, uh, uplinked for us uh, two of the programs. But the other programs, we, we said we don't want to have uplink because of what we're going to share. But you will get that on the DVD to see the album as well. Anyway, enough said on that. You know, there is a lot of fear of the unknown that people have. And uh, we are in a major prophetic season in America. And you're going, to hear, you're going to be hearing me talk a lot about this in the days ahead. Some things that the Lord is giving me, some things that He's showing me. As a matter of fact, the conferences and meetings that we're going to this year, the Holy Spirit is absolutely pouring out in my spirit, the most important revelation and illumination, I think, that I've ever had in my entire life. And I want you to be a part of that. We're going to be airing in a few weeks the tapes from the Israel tour. We just got back from Israel, and we're going to be editing those tapes and making available to the entire world those particular programs on the Manifest program. And they're, they're some of the folks' greatest programs without any shadow of a doubt. Something that has really stirred me up lately, however, is and I get calls from parents and from pastors and different individuals. You know, our young people being raised up are really losing uh, the history of America and losing their spiritual walk with God. So many of them are by many of the colleges and universities that they're attending where you know they're taught to to doubt what they believe they're taught evolution instead of creationism uh, they're taught social ideas that are 100 percent contrary to god's word and i've often said and i'm not just throwing this out here just to say this but you know i'm uh, I'm, I'm going on 50 years of age i travel across the country i love doing what i'm doing but I, sometimes i've prayed god there's got to be a multi multi-millionaire out there that would leave multiple, multiple millions of dollars to Voice of Evangelism and help me start a Bible school uh, where we could teach kids the not only the Bible, but teach them how to stand up for what they believe. Why should kids go to a so-called uh, Christian school where the professors are teaching, are te helping them to tear down all they believe? Why aren't they teaching them how to defend the faith, how to stand up? Why, why are we against abortion? Why are we against... Uh, men with men. Why? What's the reason? And know how to defend it by the Word of God. And so I just felt like saying that today. There may be one person in the United States or outside the United States that would be interested in doing that. And I'll take on an assignment to mentor this generation if that's what God wants or help train them in the Word of God and have other people to do that as well if that is God's will. That's how stirred up I am about this issue of our young people in the United States and even the world. My time is up. I'm going to be back next week with another program for Manifest. God bless you.